striking your irons pure is a great way to lower your scoring. Today I'm going to be meeting up with PJ professional Jack Backhouse to look at why we hit fats and thins and see how we can get that iron play better. So when it comes to irons, strike is one of the things that amateur golfers typically struggle with the most. Why is that and kind of what can we do to kind of eliminate those like fats or thins? I think what we have to understand first is that a fat and a thin shot are basically the same thing. All that's different is the contact with the ground. So on both of those shots, what's happened is the club has swung down and has bottomed out too early. Uh, so, and what I mean by that is that the club swings down and what we want to happen is for the club to strike the ball and then move into the turf where on the fat and thin shots, what's happened is the clubs bottom out before the ball. So on a fat one, it bottoms out and the club hits the ground early. And on the thin one, the club bottoms out, you miss the ground, the club's moving up, and then you hit the ball with no turf. So what we've got to do to, to improve the strike is we have to move the bottom of our swing, the low point, forwards. So you have to imagine that the, the swing is like an arc. So the club swings down to its lowest point and then starts to arc back up again. So we want to move that low point probably two or three inches ahead of the ball with the irons to ensure that solid strike every time. I think it's probably a big misconception because a lot of people would just think, well, I'm trying to hit it, you know, into the back of the ball, like the low point surely should be there. Yeah. And it kind of doesn't really make sense to them that actually it should be in front of the ball because you're hitting that ball on the way down and then the swing is kind of finishing. So a good way you can sort of look at this is if if you go on out onto some grass and make some swings or hit some shots, if you hit a shot properly and you take a divot, the, actually the deepest part of the divot is probably two or three inches bef after the ball. And as I say, that's the low point. So we've got to do, you know, make changes in our technique to move the ball further back up the low point so that we st are striking down, we get the spin, we get the strike and the trajectory for the good shots. What would be some good drills for someone to maybe even one, find out where the low point is at the moment and then look at moving it forward. Yeah, so um, something that I get, I like people to do um, in my sessions for people who are sort of completely unaware of strike is I get a stick down on the ground, sort of pointing at the ball, and I, I put the, I, put, I line the stick up off the right, inside of the right foot. And what I have people do is just make some practice swings and see if they can get the club to hit the ground after the stick. I would start off doing this slowly because what I see often is people who don't understand the low point will swing down and they clatter, <laughs> clatter the stick. The stick goes flying and everyone gets a bit shocked. Um, so start off slow, but just like you normally would, normal stance, stick inside the right foot. And just practice making some swings where you, you, the club hits the ground after the stick and that's how you know the low points forward. Another thing I try to get people to do is try and take the divot off the front foot, even if they're hitting a nine iron or a wedge, and that just gets people, you know, leaning forwards, hitting the ground forwards, because obviously we're playing these shots from sort of like a middle ball position. Sometimes it is almost just like a simple case of awareness and showing people where the divot needs to be. Definitely. But other times there's going to be faults in the swing yeah. that are causing people to hit those fats and thins. So. What are kind of big things that you see people get wrong a lot and how can they work on them? So the, the, there's probably two big things that really that we see all the time. The, the first thing is golfers don't get their weight on the front foot enough. So one thing that we can do that definitely moves the low point forwards is move our weight forwards because that the low point will just shift forwards. So as you're swinging down, for those perfect iron shots, we generally want to see 80 to 90% of our weight on our front foot at impact, where a big thing we see with amateurs is as they're swinging down, they either hang on the back foot because they're trying to help it up in the air, or they just don't understand that they need to move forwards. I think that's a huge thing because you see so many people kind of leaning back. They're trying to get the ball in the air, but what they don't realise is actually hitting down into the ball is going to give it that loft yeah. and height. So all of our clubs are, have loft. The clubs are designed with loft for that reason. So what, what we have to do is let the club do its job, you know, and do what it's designed to do. So I've got a nine iron here and even though I move forwards, I've still got loads of loft. The, the clubs don't need any help getting the ball in the air and once you realise that actually we are trying to sort of hit down for it to go up, people generally improve quite quickly. And actually kind of backing up on the ball like that means generally you're going to hit it low on the club face, which is going to make the loft less effective anyway. So yeah. you're actually probably hitting even lower shots 
than you would if you weren't doing that. Definitely. So it, if you if you're leaning back and you've got like a wedge in your hand, the, you know the low point's definitely going to be back. You're going to catch it low and it's going to shoot off like a four iron. And that's when you see people they're 80 yards away and then they end up 30 yards or 40 yards through the other side where what we've got to do is get on our left side get leaning forwards and then strike the ball on the way down and then that gives us that consistent launch angle so then we can properly sort of control distance the second point where we want our hands impact so again golfers are always trying to help the ball up in the air and sort of not allow the club to do what it's designed to do so we see all the time and this usually goes hand in hand with people not getting their weight forwards is they're leaning back and they start like releasing their wrist angles and like letting the club pass your hands early almost hitting up on it where if you go and look at like tall player swings or people who strike the ball really well what you're going to see every single time is the weights on the left foot and their hands are ahead of the ball at impact and if you're if your weights forward and your hands are forward then you're almost pretty much guaranteed to have that low point forwards so you're going to hit the ball pretty well every time so is there anything players could do purely from a setup point of view to kind of help promote this yeah so what we can do is we can basically preset a good strike by a couple of changes in our setup so the first thing you can do is pretty obvious move the ball back because the further the ball is back that generally the more sort of back on the low point and the more down we're going to hit on it. Option two is going to be sort of like recenter your hips forwards and what that does is it like moves your weight more to the left and then the third option is move the hands further forward. If I was in like a fairway bunker and I have to hit the ball properly um, and it's really important I'm probably going to do all three of those things. The ball's going to be back, my weight's going to be forward and my hands are going to be forward so I'm pretty much now guaranteed to strike the ball first. That's kind of another really good little tip as well. Like if people want to practice the strike, doing it from a fairway bunker yeah. is a great place to do it because it makes it so obvious if you've caught it well or not. Yeah, so something I, there aren't many places or practice facilities that have a bunker you can hit full shots from. But if you go out onto the golf course to practice, I would take five balls, stick them in a bunker. And what I would actually do is draw a line, draw a line in the sand, Put the ball sort of just ahead of the line and then make five swings and see if you can get your divot ahead of the line every single time and what you can do is play around with those three things ball position weight and hands and see do i need all three can i get away with just one or you know what we have to do because it's going to be sort of personal for everybody